Hey everyone, it's me, Mr. T, and this is the second episode of Boring Tattooer. In the first episode of this show, I explained what it's about and what to expect from it. If you haven't watched it yet, please do that now. Today I'll show you how I set up my workplace and explain why it's such an important part of the process. Even though it looks like a very basic thing that everyone should know how to do properly, you'd be surprised by how many artists don't pay enough attention to it. Tattooing, when done correctly, is safe, but we have to be extremely careful so we don't spread serious diseases like hepatitis or even HIV. The first thing that you should do is wash your hands completely with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Our hands collect an incredible amount of bacteria daily and it's better to wash these germs off often. When you do this, all jewelry, bracelets, rings and watches have to be removed as they have pretty much the same amount of bacteria on them. Wash your hands well all around and between the fingers. After this, dry your hands with a fresh paper towel and use the same towel to open any door you need to exit through. Clean hands should avoid touching anything that isn't clean and disinfected. Next, we return to the workstation. In my studio, it's a wooden table with a top that's completely covered with glass. Glass is easy to clean with any cleaning solution and it looks good for a long time. Put on gloves and sanitize the working surface with the germicidal disposable wipes to kill everything living on it. Give it a minute to dry, then cover it with cling film. You need to make sure that the entire surface of the table that you can touch during the process is covered and protected. At the edges of the table, bend the film around the countertop and tape it down with masking tape. Many tattoo artists like to use dental bibs to protect their station, but it's important to understand that most of these bibs are not designed for prolonged contact with petroleum jelly or liquids. They're supposed to be used as a way to protect patients' clothing or as a backing for medical instruments. The tray that doctors put these dental bibs on is always sterilized after each operation. If you want, you can use them for a better look for your station or convenience while working, but only with a layer of cling film underneath to reliably protect the surface. If I work on legs, a torso or neck, I cover the chair, massage table or any other piece of furniture that I'm going to use. When I tattoo an arm, I do the same with the armrest. If I work on a shoulder, I always make sure to roll up both the armrest and the back of the chair so that the client doesn't touch the unprotected part of the chair if they are moving. On top of the plastic film, I use paper sheets or disposable pillowcases for the comfort of the client, because it's not very pleasant to sit on the plastic for several hours. It's very important to explain to the client that they need to be very careful not to touch anything around them with the freshly tattooed part of the body. It's also necessary from the moment you disinfect the skin to prohibit the client from touching this area with their hands. Otherwise, all your work may turn out damaged due to poor hygiene by the client. Also, if the client touches their fresh tattoo and then other things, it increases the risk of cross-contamination, meaning transmission of viruses from a client to a surface and from a surface to another person. If I use a lamp while I work, I cover it with cling film. I designed my studio to have LED lights on the ceiling. They're adjustable in brightness and fill the entire space evenly with light that's very close to daylight. So I personally do not need a separate lamp. Don't forget to also cover the lift lever of your chair, because in most cases you will use it during the process. After this, we protect the power supply with a barrier film and make sure to put plastic sleeves on the cables. In my studio there is no power supply or cable as I use a portable battery pack that connects directly to my tattoo machine. I put the battery in a piece of the same protective plastic cord sleeve. Next, put the bottles containing soap and water in a special bag or wrap them with cling film. If you're using a bottle, the bag is a much better solution because it can be quickly and easily removed in one movement without having to unwrap and touch the dirty covering. If during the work you plan to use your laptop or tablet, you should make sure to also protect them with a film or a sticker. Before starting your work, you need to cover your phone with a sticker or hide it in a bag 
so you can touch the screen, switch music tracks or answer calls. During the break and work, you can remove this sticker or bag, but don't forget to replace it with a new one before returning to work. Take the glide or jelly that you prefer from the can using a disposable tank depressor. I personally use Inky's Pink Glide. It's organic and smells great. Ink caps can be glued to the surface with the same gel. I use ink caps with double-sided tape or sticky bottoms. These are usually more convenient and cleaner. A plastic cup for washing needles should be filled with distilled or at least filtered water. Never use tap water. As for paper towels, prepare enough pieces for what you'll need and stack them instead of touching the roll every time you need a piece. My favorite towels are Aura Tattoo Wipes, which I believe are the most convenient and safe because they are designed for one-handed grabbing, which eliminates touching the rest of the stack. I also noticed that they leave the least amount of dust on the skin so the needle doesn't get clogged so often like regular paper towels. This is not a paid advertisement, I just really like them. The most important thing to make sure of is this, that all surfaces and objects that we can touch during the session are protected by a disposable layer of plastic, which we change after each client. This is the main way to avoid cross-contamination. Remember that this is a danger not only for you, but also your customers, co-workers, relatives and friends. Make it a habit to properly set up your workstation, even when you're only practicing on fake skin, so you don't forget anything when it comes to working with a client. In the next video, I'll show you how to clean your workstation after a tattoo session. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and tell your friends. I'm sure they will also find this information useful. If you have any questions or ideas for my next videos, let me know in the comments. The show is sponsored by Bishop Rotary, and in the description below you can find my personal discount code to get 10% off at bishoptattoosupply.com. Thank you all and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.